Hi friends, I'm in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador in Canada. Today we're talking about the top five vibrato mistakes that you can make on the violin and the viola. You ready for this? It's violin time. Lynn Quo and I'm founder of Violin with Dr. Lynn. I coach motivated violinists like you how to master your instrument and become fearless performers. So today I'm going to dive right in into the top five vibrato mistakes that I see people doing. These mistakes are what I see in students of mine and I work with them in my violin boot camp. The first mistake I see people doing in vibrato on the violin and the viola is what I call the weird wiggle. This looks very odd. It looks like this. Not very attractive. Now what is going on there? It's because the motions are incorrect. We have to look at the correct motion for vibrato and that is a function of having a great sense of this arm bone, the ulna arm bone, which is going back and forth in a horizontal direction along the length of the string. So if you were to picture a path along the string, your bone, your arm bone, is sort of waving at your, yourself along the length of the string. There is also a vertical element to it as well. So, how do we fix the weird wiggle? The solution is what I like to call the handprint exercise. What I mean by the handprint exercise is printing the palm of the hand onto the instrument here. That prevents an incorrect movement of wiggling from the wrist as well as rotation of the wrist. So locking your hand palm onto the body of the instrument will prevent you from either rotation or separating the wrist from the instrument. This is the weird wiggle. So once you have your hand print onto the instrument, then you can proceed to do a vibrato exercise. So let's say it would be on a second finger. It's a G sharp on the second finger. So I have my printed palm here so that's what I would do for the weird wiggle the second vibrato mistake I see violinists and violists doing is what I call the too tense vibrato there's too much tension it's very common in the left hand to be gripping the neck and it will look something and sound something like this. It feels terrible. So how do we get rid of tension when we want to vibrate? The first rule of thumb, actually it does relate to the thumb, is to relax the thumb, releasing tension in the thumb. So what I normally do is wiggle the thumb just to see if it is remaining relaxed. When you have your finger down, the one you want to vibrate on, double check your thumb by wiggling it to see if it is not squeezing the neck of the instrument. When you have established that the thumb is not squeezing, you will sense a general relaxation in the ent entirety of your hand. And I like to think of it as an energy circuit running from the thumb all the way to the end of each finger. Whatever finger you choose to vibrate on, I like to think of it as an energy circuit. What I like to call the golden horseshoe. So that is the solution to the two tense vibrato, the golden horseshoe. So whether it is first finger, I'm thinking of a golden horseshoe of relaxed energy from here to here. And on the second finger as well. Third finger. And the fourth finger. 
play. Now, whenever I have too much tension accumulating in my playing, I also like to remind myself that the entire arm structure needs to be one relaxed unit. And if we examine where the arm begins, it actually is connected here at the collarbone and in the shoulder blade. So the arm, this humerus bone is, is actually, this humerus bone is actually a ball and socket mechanism inside here. So that attaches to the collarbone and shoulder area and all of this remains relaxed, free and mobile. Even though not much of vibrato motion comes from that area, I still do find it helpful to relax and think of this area when I vibrate. So in addition to relaxing the thumb, I also think of relaxing this area all the way up into the collarbone. Now, if you haven't seen my interview with Jennifer Johnson, check it out here. It's a must watch because Jennifer Johnson is a body mapping educator and she wrote the book called What Every Violinist Needs to Know About the Body. And in this interview, she explains the entire arm structure and how it relates to the violin playing. And she also actually talks about the bow as well. I highly recommend you check that interview out because you will gain a much clearer picture of what is going on from collarbone, shoulder blade, arm socket, all the way to the finger, the thumb, and the wrist joints. All right, the third vibrato mistake that I see violinists and violists make is called the inappropriate vibrato. This is actually more of a stylistic error. When people are not listening to the type of vibrato they are using for the style of music they are playing, this is where it becomes inappropriate. For example, if you're playing, uh, let's say, early music, you wouldn't necessarily bring out your rich, mad vibrato. This is not the type of vibrato I would use for Bach or Mozart. Um, and there are also very fast vibratos, very slow vibratos, very wide vibratos, and very narrow vibratos. In general, romantic music and let's say contemporary, more contemporary music will can tolerate a bit wider of a vibrato. If you're playing early music, I would choose a little bit of a narrower amplitude. a little bit of a narrow amplitude. If it's Bach, I would choose as well a narrow amplitude. So not too juicy like um, So know your styles. The solution to the inappropriate vibrato is to listen to great artists, listen to a lot of recordings, start to observe the differences between these different styles and then the second part of observing is to observe your own vibrato and that entails what I teach my violin boot campers in my program. I let them know that how important it is to keep your ears open. In my program we work together very closely to make sure that we're constantly monitoring what is coming out of our instrument and whether it is appropriate or inappropriate. If you're liking this video, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment below, okay? I will be going deeper into the next video, so stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and you will definitely catch my exercises, which will show you how to deepen your vibrato, which will then develop your sound. All right, you ready for the fourth mistake of vibrato? The fourth mistake that I see violists and violists doing with vibrato is what I call the uncentered vibrato. This happens a lot when we are not listening to the center of the pitch. So let's say you're playing... There is 
no real center of the pitch. Make sure that when you are oscillating your vibrato, that your ear is centered on the pitch that you desire. So that requires what I like to call the big elephant ears, what I work on with my students in the boot camp that I teach. You definitely want to, let's say on an F sharp, you want to maintain the pitch in, in its purity. That's no vibrato. There, the pitch is still constant. And that is not a centered pitch. So you can hear the development. So that's the uncentered vibrato. So basically the solution to the uncentered vibrato is the auditory feedback loop. What I mean by that is you are constantly listening very carefully to what is coming out in terms of pitch. Instead of... Yeah, always make sure that the pitch is precisely where you want to be. This actually is more to do with here and here. And then your brain will then direct what comes out of your finger. It's as simple as that. The fifth vibrato mistake that I often see is the one I see most often. And this is what I call the stop-start vibrato. This is what is called also known as the delayed vibrato. Now it is definitely something that we all need to work on. It is not easy to correct a delayed vibrato, but there are solutions. So the solution to a delayed vibrato is to practice continuous vibrato. I would do continuous vibrato exercises in your scales. What I'm trying to do is to carry the oscillation from finger to finger to finger rather than stopping and starting. It is very tempting to stop and start with each new finger. So one way to practice a continuous vibrato is to actually hold down double stops. So the trick is a four and a one vibrato double stop is very useful for scales. Also, any type of double stop that you hold will pre prepare your hand so that it is capable of vibrating on one finger as well as another finger. So that is how I would practice continuous vibrato, in double stops and inside scales. Okay, stay tuned for the next video. I will be going deeper into very specific exercises that will be going very much into the fingers, the knuckles, the joints, and we will be looking at amplitude, speed, and arm vibrato and wrist vibrato. So stay tuned, check out the next video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And before you go, tell me in the comments what you liked about the five mistakes. What you actually, tell me what tip you liked the best and which mistakes you think you might be doing. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching.